call it Big Sky Country, the last of the great places, Montana. To hunters, it's a land of opportunity. It's a land of elk, mule deer, bighorn sheep, grizzly bears, black bears, and whitetails? You bet. In the last 15 years, the whitetail has come on strong in Montana, and it's producing some of the biggest bucks in the country. Hi, I'm Ron Spomer, and this is Winchester Legends. Great forest, tall mountain, big grassland. It's prime habitat for the great whitetail. You'll find it all in Montana with Winchester Legends. Winchester Legends is brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Swarovski Optic. Truck Vault, manufacturers of the world's finest secure in-vehicle storage systems. SOS Outdoor Products, quality gear for the outdoor enthusiast. She Safari, clothing for her expedition. If you've a hankering for some pretty sunsets, mountain scenery, and big game, well, we've found the spot. And the locals are waving you in. Montana is the melting pot of big game. And few parts of it beat the diversity found in the southwest corner near Alder, where Upper Canyon Outfitters has been sharing their bounty with guests for two generations. Despite the northern exposure, the hunting is hot. Upper Canyon Ranch is sort of a classic it's a family-owned ranch, three generations now. My dad homesteaded here in about 1910, and he, he got this ranch about 22. They're cattle folks, they knew elk, they're riding in the mountains in the summertime, and the combination really works out well because not only do they know the land intimately and the wildlife that uses it, but they're great with people. Just a warm, friendly atmosphere. It's just really everything you could ask for in a good quality hunt. I was born and raised, you know, with whitetail hunting with my uncle and my dad. That uh, contributes to all the hunting I do and guiding. Mark was enthusiastic. He loves hunting. He loves big country. He's a bit of a farmer and a rancher back there in Pennsylvania, so he just brings his whitetail knowledge and his knowledge of the outdoors in general out here and he's really an asset. We keep a lot of big bucks. There's uh, always that chance of that 170, 180. You know, we see them every day. It's not always on our property, but you don't know whenever they're gonna come over that, that fence and come into an area where we can hunt them. A lot of this country, we can't hunt. The property lines, I don't know why it is with whitetail hunting, but so often, they always seem to be right there on the neighbors, and you're just waiting for them to come across the fence. Mark had been scouting, and he patterned a couple of good bucks and he thought we had it nailed. The day I get here, the rancher brings his cattle into the pasture that these deer were feeding in every night. And of course that messed everything up because all that activity in those big animals makes the deer uncomfortable and they shifted their behavior. They're staying on the neighbor's side of the fence. So we're looking for an opportunity to find a buck that's going to come across. Okay, got your ears in Mark? Yes I do. All right, let's see if I can pull this off without messing it up too bad. Oh, that's nice. I can live with that. Let's go deer hunting. Woohoo! Look out, Mr. Buck. I believe we'll just set up right in here where we can watch this field. Uh, just wait for stuff to come out before yeah. we do anything? Yeah. We'll just kind of set up here and see if they come out. I've been seeing a buck for the past three years he's had six on one side and then just real goofy on the other side but he doesn't have six by six no not a six by six he's six on one side and then the other side's real real and you different. saw him last year yeah i saw him the past past two years and so he's something different huh yeah he's he's really unique i think i'm not sure if he's got some type of an injury that's ca causing it or or what's going and on every year it looks the same every year he's pretty it's that sounds interesting 
So we kept it in the back of my mind. I'm always interested in unusual antler growth and what happens with white tails and how they survive and all this stuff. But of course, when one comes this far and you've got the potential for a 150 to 170 class animal, you'd like to hold out for one. But I kept that crippled buck in the back of my mind just in case. Ooh, he's even bigger than that other five by. Oh, he's he's the biggest one yet, man. That's going 160 for sure. Look at that guy. Oh, we gotta forget the other one. This is the one we want. I think we need to go around, get on the other side of the river, and see if we can Let's do get it. him in there. We're spotting bucks, we're seeing some good bucks, but we're not seeing them in the right places. So we're doing some crawling along the fence lines. We're trying to cut them off. We're trying to anticipate where they're going to move in the morning from feed to cover and how we can get them when they're crossing the property that we can hunt. It wasn't easy, but man, Mark hung in there. We kept glassing and using the spotting scope, got up in the hills and looked down on them. You've got to pattern those deer before you can get in position to take one. Now, because the patterns weren't necessarily working out, we thought we would try to pull those guys out of that willow cover with some rattling and grunting. As with most game calling, I like to start off quietly in case something's really close. I've never had rattling spook a buck. I don't think it's even possible, but it just pays to start off with some light tickling of the antlers because most of the time if you get a couple of bucks sparring, you just start off with a little bit of this. It's pretty common as soon as they're into hard antler that they're doing just a little bit of tickling of the antlers. So we do the first few minutes like that. Nothing aggressive, but if you want to crank it up, after a, a couple of lighter sessions, you can start to mash them together and make it sound like a serious fight. The big fight usually is better closer to the rut. And even in the opening week of the rut, you can really crash the antlers. Act like a couple of big bucks fighting over a doe, and that can make the difference. But early in the season like this, in a pre-rut, we're a good two weeks away yet. Generally, that tickling is your safest start. That's a buck, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a good buck. Maybe we ought to move in on him. He's about to go back in the trees, I think. Getting ready to cross. I got him, I got him. Just let me catch my breath, I'm bouncing too much. Winchester Legends is brought to you by Redhead, finest in the field since 1856. Swarovski Optic. Truck Vault, manufacturers of the world's finest secure in-vehicle storage systems. Otis Technology, from the front lines to the hunt of a lifetime, the most advanced gun cleaning systems in the world. Controlled expansion bullets are one of the neatest things that come into the arsenal of the big game hunter in years. Winchester's XP3 is a perfect example. The benefit of a controlled expansion bullet is that it retains so much of its weight, almost 100%, that you can get away with shooting a light bullet, whereas in the old days, you wanted to shoot the heaviest bullet possible for deep penetration in large animals like elk and moose. Well, this XP3, because it has a lead core in the back that's bonded to the copper jacket, and its beautiful hollow point up front with an incredible sharp plastic or poly nose. The bullet is sleek and fast. You can minimize your trajectory loss, maximize your impact energy. And when that bullet lands, you get two-stage expansion. The petals peel back when hydrostatic pressure enters that nose cavity. They peel back and the lead in the shank pushes forward and bulges out. The end result is consistent expansion almost 100% weight retention every time and it all amounts to incredible knockdown power and deep penetration on the world's largest big game. Something interesting about an irrigated field has uh, ditches with grass growing up and those provide excellent stocking cover. So what we would do is get either in the ditch and walk sometimes in the water itself or just duck underneath the grass 
and in the smaller ones there was just enough grass that you could probably just crawl along it and maybe two feet high but perfect stocking cover and it would cut across those barren fields otherwise that enabled us to make a lot of good stocks wait there they're behind him that's yeah. a buck isn't it yeah yeah that's a good buck yeah there we go that's worth looking at maybe we ought to move in won't he? can we get closer yeah let's go down in this ditch and take it out all right he's worth looking at it looks like a good five by and he's coming out into the field Yeah. All those, all those does. One big yeah, one. Big fucking joint. You joined him. You see him coming? Yeah, yeah. We gotta cut some 250 yards. Yeah, yeah. That's a good 500 yards. We gotta get a lot closer. We gotta get to him before he gets out of there. He's trying to work that dough a lot. Oh, yeah. Look at him prance around there. Oh, you're a beauty, man. Let's get in there. Another 100 yards or so. I think I can get a shot. Shot Don't get too close and spook him. Getting ready to cross. Nothing. Should have brought my shooting sticks. I got him, I got him. Just let me catch my breath and bounce him. No, don't go to that fence. Mm. No. We can't shoot him now, can we? Nope. What? Maybe he'll come back. Look at him, he's just standing there. Oh, that's frustrating. Come all that way. Just for a lousy 10 feet of ground. Oh, there he goes, back in those willows even farther. There's another smaller buck there. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. He was a beauty. I tell you what, though. Any sissy buck that crawls under a fence instead of jumping, it doesn't deserve to be shot. <laughs> yeah. He's no threat to the gene pool. <laughs> yep, let's get one out of here. There you go. Oh, I would have taken him, man. What a buck. I mean, it was frustrating. When you've got a 150 class buck out there and you think he's nailed, all you need to do is close that shooting distance and when you get there, he's just taken one step too many. Oh, man, that's frustrating. But what's nice about the, the property that borders us, they don't allow any hunting. And so that gives the deer time to build up age and grow where a lot of places don't and that's why we have a bigger quantity of quality bucks and that's part of the the thrill of figuring them out and and being able to harvest them once you do get them figured out we don't normally hunt the way that ron and i did uh, he's very antsy so it gave me an experience to hunt a different style of hunting and, and to work the fence rows and the grasses you know, to use that for cover, and, and it actually taught me a different way to hunt than, than the way I normally hunt this area. To my advantage, it actually worked out that these cattle that, that had messed up the motions of the deer and their behavior patterns helped out because then Mark and I had to do more exploring, which was great for me because I got to get out there, walk around, and see the country. They all do. Yeah, look at that. That farthest one is that a buck? No, that's the one I thought was a buck earlier. Damn. Pretty big body. Okay. We're too close. As long as you're more than a hundred yards away from the deer, it seems like they don't focus their attention on that area. They're they're more concerned about the food source in front of them and any predators that might be an immediate threat. So they're not looking at much activity past 100 yards, and if we set up 200 yards to 300 yards from where we expected deer to come out, bingo. We should consider setting up out against that old uh, wheel on that irrigation. Yeah, we could sit against that in the shadows, they wouldn't see us. Maybe we can get an opening looking back over into this corner where they're coming out at. And if nothing else, they should be coming out over here. Yeah, I think we get over here or well, out away from them. We'll Let's do the cow walk, eh? Yep. Slow. You ready? Yep, take it whenever you're ready. 
Winchester Legends is brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Redhead, finest in the field since 1856. She Safari, clothing for her expedition. SOS Outdoor Products, quality gear for the outdoor enthusiast. Otis Technology, from the front lines to the hunt of a lifetime, the most advanced gun cleaning systems in the world. What with thick brush, cattle, and complicated property boundaries, Upper Canyon whitetails are proving a real challenge. But Mark and Ron seem to have pinpointed a buck concentration. Now, if they'll just stay on the right side of the fence. And we'd seen three or four beautiful five by fives in that 150 to 170 range, just couldn't get the job done. The few times that they were on our property, we couldn't finish the stock before they jumped the fence. We'll just sit right up here against this tire here. Yeah, we can see that field real good. Yeah, cover this real good here. If we have to, we can crawl over there. Yeah, just crawl over to that fence. This is great. We can get a backrest. That should happen pretty soon. Yeah, it's getting getting late. There he is. He's just come out down there at that cottonwood tree. Okay, I got him. Oh. I think that's that one you're talking about. Yep. I can see that. Oh, he's got a nice antler on one side, but he's just nothing on the other. <clears throat> I've got a temple. He's got a lot of character. He's an old buck. How long have you been seeing him? Uh, I've seen him the past two years, and he's been mature. I'm thinking he's seven or eight years old. Oh, my God. That's an old buck. And it's more challenging to take an old buck than a young one. They've got some smarts and are available. They're able to stay out of your way. Yep, take you whenever you're ready. There you got him. Good shot, good shot. He went right down, didn't he? Yeah. So I picked my shot, put him down right there, and he was really a unique animal. One thing with the, the buck that we shot, uh, I had watched him for three years now, and it's it's been a buck that, that's intrigued me since the first time I've seen him. To actually harvest him and see what it would happen to him, get him up close and personal, to me that, that was a, a big accomplishment for a, a buck that age and for me to have watched him for that long. That's funny. Oh, but look at all the points on this side. I mean, these little ones he's trying to make. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've never seen that many just on the main beam. And then a funky little hook right here. Split and brow. Split brow tine. He's <laughs> just point city on this side. Yeah. Most people are tickled to get a total of eight points with a four by four. This guy could have been, potentially, genetically, he could have been an eight by eight. Wow, what a deer. You know, they always say, if it's got a funky antler, the opposite side of the body has the injury. And that's just what he's got. Right yeah. side, back legs yeah. got the problem. Left antlers got the goofiness. It looked to us as if this animal's hoof had been here. sliced off at some point. Think he's got it's an old club foot. He's got a dew claw here, and that's just all calloused over. That's what's Look wrong with him. Sore. And I'm guessing, he's knowing agriculture, raw. and especially hay mowing, if you have a side cutter mower on the side of your tractor and you're going through a tall hay field, and these deer are bedded in it, especially the fawns, they'll sit tight and then jump at the last second. I think Ron's really happy with him. I know I'm really pleased with the way way uh, things worked out for us and to take a buck of that, that age and, and a buck that I've been watching for that many years, I think it turned out real well. That's amazing. Good job, partner. Then to think you've got a deer that he has that potential and he's a six or seven year old animal, you are hunting an experienced wary buck. I was pretty tickled to take him. Let's go get the truck. Okay, take care of him. What an unusual buck. An unusual buck in an unusual location. The beautiful mountain valleys of Montana's Rocky Mountains. This isn't the kind of habitat most of us associate with whitetails, but whitetails are more than happy to associate with it. Willow brush, hayfield, foothills, grass and conifer thickets. It's all good. And through controlled harvest of older aged animals, 
The folks at beautiful Upper Canyon Guest Ranch are ensuring legendary big buck hunting for years to come. For more information about Winchester products, log on to winchester.com. Can you work that action fast enough to get off and aim the second and third shot? Well, one of the easiest ways to get proficient is to practice with an empty gun and make sure it's empty. I'm going to take the clip magazine out of this one. I'm going to look up the chamber, stick my finger up the hole, all good safety measures. This gun is empty. And to make double sure it's empty, I'm going to shoot it into a hillside. Click. That's what I want to hear. All right. Now I can practice. I've got my deer. I take a nice, calm shot and I find out I've missed, I want to open the bolt, slide it back, slide it forward as smoothly as I can. Notice I use the palm of my hand, up, back, forward, down, rather than fingering it and taking longer. I also try to keep the rifle up and in position and looking through that scope. If you can keep the animal in the scope, so much the better. Practice dry firing like that, and the better you get, the faster you get, the better you'll be afield. field.